Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss on the topic Multiple Pulse Width Modulation Technique. In my previous video, I started the discussion on the use of Pulse Width Modulation Control Techniques for controlling the full bridge inverter output. The first PWM technique was the Single Pulse Width Modulation Control Technique which was the topic of my previous video. If you haven't watched that video yet, you can watch it in the link shown in the top right corner right now. I will also leave the link of the same in the video description below. These are the waveforms for the single pulse width modulation technique which I showed in my previous video also. There we have learned that one of the biggest disadvantage of the single pulse width modulation technique is the presence of harmonic content due to the creation of a single pulse per half cycle. This disadvantage can be overcome by allowing multiple pulses per half cycle and such a technique is called multiple pulse width modulation control and this is the topic of the discussion for this video. These are the waveforms for the multiple pulse width modulation technique. The generation of gating signals using a multiple pulse width modulation technique is very similar to that of a single pulse width modulation technique. Once again, we will be comparing a rectangular reference signal with frequency FR with a triangular carrier signal with frequency FC. The main difference between single pulse width modulation and multiple pulse width modulation is that in multiple pulse width modulation technique the carrier signal frequency is greater than the top the reference signal frequency. You can notice that in the waveform shown here. The carrier signal has more cycles per one cycle of the reference signal. Therefore the carrier signal frequency is higher than the top the reference signal frequency. We also should note that the carrier signal now overlaps the reference signal multiple times within one half cycle. Therefore, multiple pulses will be created within one half cycle and hence the name multiple pulse width modulation technique. The number of pulses that are generated per half cycle is directly equal to the number of times the reference signal and the carrier signal overlap. Therefore, we can say that the frequency of the carrier signal will determine the number of pulses per half cycle and the number of pulses per half cycle is usually denoted by P. Further, the frequency of the inverter output is determined by the frequency of the reference signal which is the rectangular signal here. Talking about the generation of the base drive pulses, when both the reference signal and the carrier signal are positive and overlapping, base drive pulses will be generated for transistors Q1 and Q2. Currently, I am talking about these two transistors Q1 and Q2. On the other hand, when both the carrier signal and the reference signal are negative and overlapping, then base drive pulses will be generated for transistors Q3 and Q4. Now, I am talking about the alternating transistors Q3 and Q4. Coming back, the ratio of the reference signal amplitude AR to the carrier signal amplitude AC is called the modulation index and it acts as the control variable at the output. The value of the modulation index varies from 0 to 1 and it controls the width of the gate drive pulses generated. Smaller the value of the modulation index, smaller will be the widths of the pulses generated. As the value of M increases, which happens as the value of the AR increases, the widths of the pulse generated will also increase. As these pulses are used to drive the transistors in the full bridge inverter circuit, the output of the inverter accordingly varies and that is how we are going to control the output voltage of the full bridge inverter. You should note that when the modulation index is 0, which happens when AR is 0, no pulses will be generated and therefore the pulse width is 0. On the other hand, when the modulation index value is 1, which happens when AR equals AC, the width of each pulse will be pi divided by P. 
Why is it pi divided by p? Because we have p pulses which are distributed across one pi. Therefore, the width of each pulse will be pi divided by p. Further, you should also notice that in the multiple pulse width modulation technique, the widths of each pulse that are generated are exactly equal. Due to this reason, the multiple pulse width modulation technique is also called as uniform pulse width modulation technique. Now coming to the mathematical part, let us now try to find how many pulses will be generated per each half cycle. As we already know, that is controlled by the frequency of the carrier signal. What is the minimum difference between the carrier signal frequency and the reference signal frequency? That is, the carrier signal frequency must be twice that of the reference signal frequency. Otherwise, it would become single pulse width modulation. So, the minimum number of pulses that must be generated to call this technique multiple pulse width modulation is equal to 2. And using that formula, let us now formulate an equation for the number of pulses per half cycle and this is given by Fc divided by 2 Fr. Now the ratio of Fc by Fr is called as the frequency modulation index and it is denoted by Mf. Therefore, the number of pulses per half cycle can also be represented in, in terms of the frequency modulation ratio as Mf divided by 2. Lastly, let delta represent the width of each pulse generated by using this technique. In such a case, the output voltage V0 is equal to the input voltage Vs multiplied by G1, G2 minus G3, G4. You can perform a very simple mathematical operation to obtain this waveform. All we need to do is take the value for Vs which is supposed to be a DC and fixed voltage then multiply that with this value minus of this value to obtain this waveform. Now coming to the full bridge inverter circuit the RMS output voltage is given by plus Vs that is when the pulses given to the base of the transistors are of full length that is complete half cycle duration. When this technique is employed, that is when multiple pulse width modulation technique is employed to control the output voltage, then the output RMS voltage can be given by the equation V0 equals 2P divided by 2 pi integral pi divided by P minus delta whole divided by 2 to pi divided by P plus delta whole divided by 2 multiplied by V0 square but V0 is equals to Vs, so it becomes Vs square into d omega t whole to the power of 1 by 2. When you simplify this expression, you will obtain the RMS value of the full bridge inverter output as Vs into square root of P delta divided by pi. So when you compare the output RMS voltages that are created by single pulse width modulation and multiple pulse width modulation, the only difference is the presence of this factor which is P. The single pulse width modulation produces an voltage equals to Vs into square root of delta by pi, whereas the multiple pulse width modulation produces an output equals to Vs into square root of P delta by pi. Right. That is about the discussion on multiple pulse width modulation control for controlling the output voltage of a single phase full bridge inverter. In my next video, I will be continuing this discussion on PWM techniques and discuss the third pulse width modulation technique. So stay tuned. If you like this video, then kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on power electronics. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.